Welcome to our live interactive worship at First Lutheran Church in Cedar Rapids. I'm Pastor Craig Brown. Joining me shortly will be Pastor Steve Knudsen. Thanks to Joel, Marissa, and the Praise and Joy team for providing our music today. We want this service to be truly interactive, so feel free to speak, sing, and pray aloud with us. If you'd like to make an interactive offering today, please click on the word give on our worship page here or our website. If your normal pattern is to put an offering envelope in the offering plate, we invite you to write out a check today and mail it to First Lutheran Church. Our annual gift tag program is back. Thank you everyone who took many, many tags last week. I'm not looking at it here live. They may or may not be available, but I wanna say not even a pandemic could stop our love and support for our kids at Four Oaks. So if you'd like to help out and we still do have some tags available, check on the link to the Sign Up Genius to take a virtual tag today from our virtual Christmas tree. If you need help, you can always call the church office this week and they will assist you. Be sure to join us online this Wednesday for Advent worship with Holden Evening Prayer at 6.30 p.m. here on our worship page or on our YouTube channel. Our pastors will give a live message and you can sing along to the beautiful Holden music. And next Sunday, I invite you to join us at 10 a.m. on Zoom for a fun adult ed class. Ruth Earhart's niece, Jan Reinhard, is the newest meteorologist at KCRG. She'll be joining us for a live interactive discussion about her faith and her role on the news. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our good and gracious God. Please join me in the call to worship. You alone, O Lord, are God. Come down, O God. You have done wonderful things in the past. Come, Come down, down, O God. God. We need you here with us now. Come, Come down, down, O God. God. We wait for you. We, we wait, wait with, with hope. hope. Let's sing.
Blessed, O Lord, our ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. Night has passed, and the dawn of as we light the first candle of this wreath, rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes, for he is our light and salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And together we say, Amen. Blessed be the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin in spite of our best efforts we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back, free to live in the peaceable realm of God. Now may you be strengthened in God's love and comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. In this season of anticipation and waiting, we prepare our hearts in the gift of hope to celebrate the coming God's greater good for us in Christ. Each lesson speaks to this hope that we have in Christ. First reading this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter. And Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus, for in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Holy Gospel today is according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days... After that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. 
From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Apostle Paul had just come off of a difficult mission trip in Athens, Greece. He had gotten his tail kicked, and something possessed him to go from a difficult journey into the mouth of the lion's den in Corinth. His colleagues and friends urged him, Paul, don't do it. Uh, Corinth is a huge huge town, cosmopolitan, 70,000 people, which was incredibly huge at those times, second only to Rome. It was full of gamblers and prostitutes. It was really the Las Vegas or the Atlantic City of its time. In fact, the fun-loving town adopted the god of Venus and built a temple in her honor which employed a thousand prostitutes. Scholars believe it was one city that was, quote, the least likely, unquote, to convert to Christianity. And yet it did. It was a crossroads location. And Paul knew if the gospel could spread there, it could spread anywhere. He spent 18 months in Corinth. They're building one of the largest churches of the first century. And when they started out, the followers of the ways that were simply known met in each other's homes. And uh, they were waiting for this second coming of Jesus to set things right and their town that was running rampant around them. They were waiting for something to change in the midst of the chaos surrounding them daily, and they grew tired of sitting and waiting in their houses for something to change. Does that sound at all familiar? (laughs) And amidst uh, this waiting, and amidst all this turmoil, the Christians started to lose hope and to backslide into some of their own old ways, and it is in this context in which Paul writes his letters, the first and second letters to the Corinthians, telling them to hold fast, to to stay true to the gospel. And he gives them this nugget in today's lesson. At one of the very beginning lessons in one of his first letters, he says, you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord. You don't lack anything. You have everything you need inside of you. God has placed it there by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can make it through this wait, Paul says. But waiting is hard for us human beings, isn't it? Of every age and of every time. Maybe more now, though, so than ever, as we complain when it takes more than two days for a package to get from Seattle to Cedar Rapids. I mean, come on, two days? where when something doesn't come up instantly on our computer, we fret and moan instantly, really? I see a lot of this uh, inability to wait in our children as they're getting excited now for Christmas. I think that's a generational thing. I certainly remember that when I was a kid. And you know what? No one was worse at waiting than my mother. Although there's a blast from the past, the Brown family in the 1980s. There's little Craig on mom's lap. And my mother, true story, would get so excited about the gifts that her sisters would give all of us kids that she would unwrap the gifts, 
to see what we got and then rewrap them back up. Always making some excuse. Well, I just wanted to see what they got you so I knew not to double it or make sure it fits or something like that. Like, Mom, stay out of our gifts. <laughs> she was the worst. It's challenging to wait. But there's also a, a fun and anticipation in waiting, right, when it comes to Christmas. As you're a kid and you, the, the world is your oyster and that gift could literally be anything. There's an excitement to it. And I almost think that part of uh, our love for the Christmas season is that, that build-up, that anticipation, those weeks of, of hopeful waiting and, and enjoying the thing. In fact, so much so when you're a kid and you rip up into those Christmas gifts on Christmas Day, uh, you know, it's fun for like a day or two or three, and then everything kind of gets put on the shelves. There's maybe three days of enjoyment once it's unwrapped, but the waiting beforehand, the enjoyment can run weeks. And I think the lesson that we learn there is that God teaches us uh, more, I think, in the period of waiting than we learn after the present has been unwrapped. Waiting can seem like a long time, but not when you put things in perspective. When we think about our, our own existence, our lives here on earth from our birth to uh, the, the few decades we have to our death, symbolized here by the red portion in red, and then the, the time we have with Jesus when he comes to be with us again or when we pass and go be with him, that white goes on forever. There is no end to it. And we look at those two comparatively, the time that we have here while we're waiting for things to be set right by God, it's so short. It's so short, isn't it? God has a lot of lessons to pack into this short time while we wait. I know there are certain lessons that God certainly has taught me during the waiting in this pandemic. I'm sure that God has taught you some things too. The first to me is to be a, a patient to be more patient, I should say. I, I, full disclosure, I'm a very impatient person, and I need to learn patience as a dad, as a Christian leader, as a coworker, and I am working on it. And I really think that God is, is really teaching me some heavy doses of lessons of patience, right? Just the other day, I found myself at Fleet Farm, and I was looking for a, a Christmas gift for uh, a relative of mine who lives in the Des Moines area and their store didn't have it and he sent me to go look for it for his grandson. I said, sure, I'll be happy to do that. And I could not find this gift and I could not find anyone to help me. And I walked around for maybe a half hour looking for some help and finally went to the customer service desk, waited another half hour over there. This was before the Christmas rush. There was no one there, but you know what? I bet that company like the rest of us dealing with COVID and their numbers are down. This retail season is going to be a lot different. We're called to be more patient. And I'm standing there in the line at Fleet Farm with my seven-year-old, grabbing at my hip pocket, and I think about it, literally, this message, thinking, Lord, okay, I get it. Teaching me patience. Be more patient. Another lesson to value traditions. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I'll, I'll, I'll be darned if I'm going to take any of our regular annual, weekly, or uh, activities for granted. Starting with Hawkeye football, oh my gosh, <laughs> we, we almost didn't have it. And cyclone football. Those things that you think, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really looking forward to this fall, and there's a lot of new things going on, but at least I'll have Hawkeye football. And then there was a chance, you know, we wouldn't even have that. Things that we count on. Weekly worship. I mean, my gosh, how many of us take for granted in our country the ability to freely go into any church that we want to on any Saturday or Sunday and, and sit down and worship with others and now we can't we shouldn't but I'll tell you what when the doors open back up I as a church member not as a, a church leader someone who's leading helping to lead an organization but just as a church member I will try not to take for granted getting the ability to worship with other Christians because it's an awesome thing to value our traditions. How many of us had to uh, suffer for the, the greater good to not get together this Thanksgiving with our extended family? That was our family. And it was tough. And it's going to be tough thinking about Christmas without grandma and grandpa. But we know not to take these things for granted. As my brother-in-law, uh, Tim, who's a pastor in a large church in West Des Moines, said, you know, 
we're not going to get together as an extended family this Christmas so that we can get together next Christmas. We're waiting with a purpose. I'll tell you another lesson I've learned is to get creative. And uh, how many of us have done this with technology and, and using our cars to do drive-by gatherings? I think of Halloween when it came by. We love Halloween in our house, and we weren't going to miss trick-or-treating, and most of our neighborhood was doing it, so we turned our lights on. I bought a six-foot tube, and we created a candy slide so we didn't get near the kids. Woo, slid down through. we got to get creative. And I think the waiting has taught us to do that, not only as a society but as a church. How can we get creative in extending the gospel while we wait, not after. We think about what's most important. Another lesson I've learned is to learn, learn what's most important in life. To realize there's wants and there's needs, right? That old thing we have to weigh. You know, I want to get together with my friends, but, but I, I need a sense of belonging. Is there somewhere else I could find that? You know, I want to get together uh, with my church family, but is there a way, a need that I have that's maybe more primordial, which is to have to grow in my relationship with my creator? Is there a way to do that? To realize what's most important in life, and that for most of us is time with our family. Yeah, I can't get together with our extended family, but I can support my spouse, and my spouse can support me. We can get together. We have our children in our home, and it's our duty to raise them. We have that experience, and that's what's most important. Our health, my own health and your health, are more important than a lot of other stuff that filled our days. We're realizing that now, right? Amen? We're learning these lessons about what's most important. And finally, I've learned to grow in the wait. That there's lessons that God can teach us while we're waiting. Like the early Christians in Corinth, we are urged by Paul not to give up but to keep the faith. We have all that we need to get through the weight, and God has some lessons to teach us as we grow in the weight. What might be God trying to teach you today? You see, friends, we are all given the grace that we need in Jesus Christ, the love of God that covers all of our sins and shortcomings, and we know that God is with us and our companion Christ as we wait for Christ yet to come back. We know that he lives in our hearts and lives in our neighbor, and we are called to serve and love our neighbor. We are given this time of waiting so that we could take our eyes maybe off our own situations and look around and see our neighbors in need and help. Our mission is to spread the gospel, and we wait with a mission, and we wait with hope. Amen.
would invite you to join me in a time of prayer. O God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for your lessons as we wait in the hope of Christ. During this time, teach us patience. Help us to value our traditions, to become creative, to learn what's truly important, to grow closer to you. Light of the world, awaken, awaken us, us to, to your, your hope. hope. We pray for all people who take care of others during this pandemic as we wait for a vaccine, protect and strengthen healthcare workers, teachers, those working essential jobs, and all who are in harm's way. Light of the world, awaken, awaken us to, to your, your hope. hope. We pray for people who are in crisis as seasons change, for those without homes facing a severe winter, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, ease their minds, light of the world, awaken, awaken us, us to, to your hope. hope. We pray for all who are apart from family this Thanksgiving, for people in our families and the congregation waiting for hope for an end to their depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering, support them when they struggle. Light of the world, awaken Holy us God. to your hope. We give thanks for the lies witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Light of the world, awaken, awaken us, us to your hope. hope. Now draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. About that day and hour, no one knows. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. We will be ready, for the Lord will come at an unexpected hour. Now may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the Spirit's joy surround you as you walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. You who sang creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship. 
Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.